Well, as the US president likes to say, we'll see what happens. And it appears that's the way the narrative of the US-North Korea planned summit continues to play out. The on-again, off-again, maybe on-again meeting between the two leaders could perhaps still happen on June 12 in Singapore as planned. A team of American officials was in North Korea today, raising expectations that the meeting called off last week might still go ahead. Late Sunday, US President Donald Trump tweeting, I truly believe North Korea has brilliant potential and will be a great economic and financial nation one day. Kim Jong-un agrees with me on this. It will happen. The roller coaster swinging upwards again after the North Korean leader said he was still willing to sit down with the US after Trump's cancellation. South Korea, of course, caught in the middle, has been instrumental in getting the leaders to agree to talk in the first place. It's once again running back and forth between the White House and the demilitarized zone between the Koreas, meeting with each leader. Now there's speak that South Korea could join the Singapore summit around June 12 for three-way talks. Now, the journey to here has caused whiplash for anyone paying close attention, so strap in. Let's take a quick look back. He wiped out the uncle. He wiped out this one, that one. I mean, this guy doesn't play games. North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury. Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself and for his regime. I will surely and definitely tame the mentally deranged U.S. dotard with fire. The entire United States is within range of our nuclear weapons, and a nuclear button is always on my desk. This is reality, not a threat. We bade farewell to the frozen relationship between North and South Korea, which was a nightmare, and we announced the beginning of a warm spring to the world. Kim Jong-un, was uh, he really has been uh, very open and I think very honorable from everything we're seeing. I'll be meeting with Kim Jong-un in the coming weeks as we seek to denuclearize the North Korean area. I really think he wants to do something and bring that country into the real world. I have decided to terminate the planned summit in Singapore on June 12th. Whether the U.S. will meet us in a meeting room or encounter us at a nuclear-to-nuclear -nuclear showdown is entirely up to the decision and behavior of the U.S. You talk about your nuclear capabilities, but ours are so massive and powerful, I pray to God they will never have to be used. Everybody plays games. You know that. You know that better than anybody. And Korea analyst Nimrod Nir joins me in studio for more. Nimrod, a pleasure to have you with us. Nice to have you. What factors could the US and, and UK delegations be looking at at this stage to revive these talks? I think uh, the entire roller coaster, as you put it, that we're witnessing in the past few days is a symptom of a much deeper condition that I think is in the heart and the core of the entire conflict. Uh, we're all talking about what's the demands from North Korea, the, the nuclearization, obviously. No one speaks about the demands from the US side. Uh, the United States had an interest, and we have to uh, say it, uh, to destabilize North Korea because that justifies putting it very, uh, in, in very simplistic uh, terms, uh, their presence there. They have a very, very vast uh, military and intelligence presence both in South Korea, Guam, and the area which borders both China and Russia, meaning the interest of the U.S. to destabilize North Korea was to justify their very, very large military and intelligence uh, bases. It's a geopolitical foothold from their perspective. So uh, I think like, we have to understand that then came Trump, and I don't think the changes we see in this climate are due to his uh, bullyish or businessish uh, approach, but it really stems from a systematic 
uh, worldview of America first, of uh, getting the states out of the world and being less the world uh, policeman, as he put it. And in that sense, he cares less about these geopolitical strategies and having, like, next to China and Russia, this infiltration points, both militarily and uh, gathering intelligence from these nations. Um, and he really cares more about bringing the troops and the finance that puts them there uh, back home. And I think what we're witnessing regarding this, so the only shift that happened is in the uh, American policy towards North Korea. It's not about uh, two guys uh, trying to put on a certain show. And in the past few days, uh, the main reason for the seemingly collapse of these discussions were uh, voices from the Trump administration, John Bolton, Mike Pence afterwards, uh, saying things like, we're talking about the Libyan model, where Gaddafi not only gave his uh, uh, nuclear capabilities for, for nothing, but he also was killed uh, a few years afterwards. And that really pushes uh, Kim uh, out of uh, out of the picture, and moreover, the question, the true question, is there are two options. Either the American administration is really, really uncorrelated and speaks in very different voices and terms, as we've seen, uh, or uh, they actually are in belief of that policy, a very long-standing policy of the U.S. that we should uh, remain our forces there. We shouldn't. Uh, take out our military and intelligence presence there. We don't want that to be on the table during the discussions. Uh, and for that reason, they created this uh, uh, kind of uh, very, very aggressive rhetoric, uh, which couldn't leave Kim without a reaction. Uh, but eventually, uh, although gambling and making predictions about the North Korean affair is a very tricky business, mm -hmm. I truly believe uh, this will be a, a breakthrough. And we're headed into a very, very positive direction in that sense, because Trump comes to this. Not only is it it's his only real international achievement that he can bring, you know, there's Iran and there's North Korea, there's the carrot and there's the stick, etc. But from his worldview of America first, of taking and pulling out the forces and the money from the entire world, uh, I think it does align with Kim's uh, ideology. The only thing is, will the American uh, army uh, be willing, will the U.S. administration be willing to also pull off uh, a great deal of their deployments in that area. Very briefly, South Korea's su surprise meeting with uh, Kim and Moon Jae-in, we once again heard Moon saying that Kim is, a, is committed to complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. What does Kim mean by that? This exp he means, and Kim says it again and again, he's talking about demilitarization of the entire Korean Peninsula, meaning also South Korea, also the military... But he uses uh, the, the word denuclearization, not demilitarization. Use both, use both. He's always saying we have to take... Uh, by the way, uh, there's a, a certain uh, belief that's even published now and again in the North Korean uh, media that the U.S. actually holds nukes in South Korea. So first of all, I think he's also addressing that for inner purposes, although he knows probably it's not the case because they re really don't need to. Uh, so first of all, it's for uh, inner purposes. He, he wants to say, yeah, we, we both will uh, denuclearize the peninsula, but he's also using terms as demilitarization, meaning the Americans have to take uh, back their sure. presence there.